So the next part, we are looking at implementing this chosen solution. We are looking at, so we're looking at the detailed steps. Uh, so let's go through those. Uh, so the part one, which has to do with solving the problem for the water droplet, um, in chapter 14, again, we have these detailed, uh, detailed steps, detailed uh, steps in uh, from chapter 14. So we have these detailed steps here. So let's go over them. So first we need to choose a geometry. So this is obviously a sphere. Then we have to find the characteristic length based on diameter. So for a sphere, it is the diameter. So this is my characteristic length, which is given as 0 0.01 meter. So whether it's natural or forced, so we're given a velocity, so it is definitely a forced convection. Next is whether we want a local, local or average. Now, I am not interested in how evaporation varies from one point to another, which it does, by the way. We are interested in the overall um, evaporation or the average amount so certainly we don't need local uh, local formulas formulas that depend on that would depend on the posi position on the sphere we don't need that so then we get into calculating Reynolds number to choose between laminar and turbulent we'll see in a second we don't need to do this uh, right away because we don't have two separate formulas in here. We only have for um, one uh, flow case. So next we get into choosing the appropriate equation. Okay, so let's look at. So next we choose an appropriate equation. Okay, so notice that this is completely analogous to uh, heat transfer. So that is what we will go by. So we are not given any new formulas. It's the same formulas from chapter 6. And so from there, we just look for the right geometry and condition. Notice that this is over a sphere. And for sphere, we have two formulas then for natural and for force. So this is obviously for forced convection because we have a velocity u infinity is given. A velocity is given. So for forced convection, then this is our equation. But you notice this equation is written for heat transfer. So this is equal to h d over k in heat transfer. So in mass transfer, it will be Hm. And instead of K, we have diffusivity of vapor in air. And um, so, so that's the substitution. Reynolds number stays the same. And then for Prandtl number, again, we have a substitution. So Prandtl number is mu Cp over K which we can write as mu over rho over k over rho Cp. So you can see this is my thermal diffusivity alpha. So for H, uh, for um, mass transfer, then this would be equal to mu over rho. That stays the same from heat to mass, viscosity and density. And then thermal diffusivity gets replaced by mass diffusivity. So we normally write AB, but here it's vapor in air. Um, so now we get into the properties needed. Now note that the properties are for fluid. We're not interested inside the droplet of water. Properties are th at that of fluid. 
and the temperature and concentration variation of properties across the boundary layer are ignored. You see, temperature, if you look at the sphere, as it's evaporating, it's going to be colder uh, than uh, surrounding. And so that kind of variation, this variation is ignored. So we ignore this variation. Um, and, uh, okay. So with that, we can calculate Reynolds number. Reynolds number is equal to U infinity that is given, diameter that is given. So this is my velocity given. This is the diameter given. And this rho air is something we read for the conditions given from the table in appendix. So this is the unit for density of air. Likewise, we read the viscosity of air. So this viscosity of air from the table. So from table, um, we read this. And so that gives us the Reynolds number of uh, 1805 and, and then the Schmidt number which we just said is equal to um, is equivalent to Prandtl number okay um, but in this case it's mu over rho divided by um, the diffusivity and and so we plug in again all those properties and, and so then we get uh, 0.6155. Okay, so now we've got all the properties. We need uh, the equation. So again, the equation, this Sherwood number is nothing but the equivalent Nussel number, which is HMD over DAB. So, and, and then a Schmidt number again is mu over rho uh, d a b. Okay, so we plug in all these quantities that we just calculated, and that gives us uh, h m times d over d a b. This guy uh, e equal to 23.32. So from there. I can calculate HM uh, uh, because just plugging in for uh, DAB. AB, A is vapor and B is air. So DVA, diffusivity of vapor in air, that is again uh, from table and, um, and the, this is the diameter. So that gives me the HM value. This is my mass transfer coefficient. So now we need to calculate evaporation knowing the mass transfer coefficient. So the amount of evaporation from a drop is given by HM times the area of the sphere times concentration at the surface minus concentration at infinity okay so hm we just calculated area is the surface area 4 pi r square concentration at the surface is equal to um, th this value that i will show you in a second how we get it minus zero uh, at infinity. So how do we get concentration at the surface? So this is a water surface. So recall that at the water surface, the amount of vapor is given by vapor pressure. Okay. So the, if I know the vapor pressure, that's the partial pressure of vapor that is PSAT. And that is a property of water then from that I can calculate concentration using 
uh, this formula that comes from ideal gas that we have done number of times in class. So C sat is equal to P sat, the saturation vapor pressure times this quantity. So the saturation vapor pressure then at the temperature given is something that you find from the table. So this is from table. Okay. So you plug this in and, and then you get um, the, the concentration of water vapor. So this is, this is equal to C vapor at the surface. Okay. So then we plug this guy in here and then how that is how we get the total um, quantity of evaporation. So as I said, this is obtained from the, the table. So the part two is skin surface. And so for skin surface, this um, the shape, the sphere, the amount of vapor in here is not not same as for free water. Um, so we're go we're going to need a new value, and we will see how that comes. But the H M does not change. H M has to do with flow over a a uh, uh, sphere and that doesn't change so the amount of evaporation so the rate of evaporation is equal to hm times area times c of vapor at the surface minus c infinity just like as you do in heat transfer. So HM, as I said, does not change. The area is the same. And then we have this vapor at surface. So how did I get that? So notice that the condition given is that the skin has 50% moisture. So 50% moisture skin stays in equilibrium with this condition of air. So this is about 0.95 relative humidity. So at this condition of moisture in the skin, this is going to be the amount of vapor in the air. So for this condition, we can find from, uh, from table, and then uh, from the data provided, the 0.95 is equal to, this is equal to this amount in uh, kilograms per meter cube, okay? And so that gives us the final amount of water lost as 0.716 uh, milligrams per second, which is slightly lower as we expected because the the skin has water that is also being uh, attracted to the skin solids so then the, that water is not as free to evaporate so its vapor pressure is lower so it's going to evaporate less